Hi guys, it's Vanessa. I'm here to do the book postscript tag, which was created by Adam from Memento Mori, and that was tagged by Francesca from Franny Pan for Thoughts. Or at least that's her name on Goodreads. Franny for Thoughts? Franny for Thoughts. I really like this tag. The first question in this tag is, what is the longest book you read this year and, and the book that took you the longest to read? The longest book I read was Magpie Murders, according to my year in review from Goodreads. I am not a person that reads a lot of long books. The book that took me the longest to read is The Cadaver King and the Country Dentist, which was a beginning of November, nonfiction November pick that didn't finish until like the end of December because I had a hard time reading the physical copy and was waiting for my hold to come in for the audiobook and that took a long time too. The other book that I put on here that I also thought was one of the longer ones was Crazy Rich Asians which I read super quickly like the first 200 pages and then I kind of fell off and stopped reading it as fast. I think I kind of just got weighed down with like the repetitiveness and like the just fly on the wall aspect of it and not really connecting with the characters and that took me a month to read and I also returned the physical copy of that book and waited for the audiobook book and finished it on audiobook. Next question is a book you read in 2018 that was outside of your comfort zone. I would say this was one of the years where I really tried romance and I found that I didn't really like it. But one book that I would consider romance, even though it's also really literary fiction that I'm enjoying at the moment is Normal People by Sally Rooney. So maybe reading out of my comfort zone and reading some romance will have some benefits coming up on the end of 2018. Number three, how many books did you reread in 2018? I thought this was gonna be like zero. And then I went on my Goodreads, all the books that I read in 2018, and four of them were rereads. Four! Which is amazing because I made it a goal last year to reread books and I only reread one, I think. And this year, when I didn't make it a goal at all, four of them got reread. So the four that I reread was Speak by Laurie House Anderson, One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia, the first Harry Potter book, and The Awakening by Kate Chopin. One Crazy Summer was for school. Speak was because I wanted to reread it and then read the graphic novel. Harry Potter because I thought I was going to start a whole Harry Potter reread, but I've had I have not picked up the second book yet and The Awakening because it was a buddy read. I would say out of all of those four my favorite reread of the year which is question number four of this tag would be Speak by Laurie Hals Anderson just because I hadn't read it in over five years I had forgotten so many things about it and just like the tone and the vibe that I get when I read that book. The next question is a book you read for the first time in 2018 that you look forward to reading in the future? Um... A few of them, I would say. I really enjoyed and would like to reread the graphic novel, kind of graphic reporting, Escape from Syria, which was fantastic. I would reread anything by David Small. On audiobook, I would love to reread Sadie and the Poet X because they were fantastic audiobook experiences for me and I wouldn't mind re-listening to them. Number six is favorite single short story or novella that you read in 2018. The first time I read this question, I was like, mm, I don't read short stories. I have no answer for this. And then I did realize that I, I have read short stories. I just don't keep track of them as much. One that I would mention is Inventory, which is in Carmen Maria Machado's Her Body and Other Parties. I DNF that book because I just, it was too experimental for me. And I don't really know if short stories are the type of medium for me but I really enjoyed Inventory and I rated that story five stars. I just love the apocalyptic vibe of it and how she included other really interesting ways of discussing the passage of time and it's done through like sexual history. I was completely riveted by Inventory. Not so much the SVU story, that was the reason that I DNF'd it, but you win some and you lose some. The next question is number seven, Mass Appeal, a book that you liked and would recommend to a wide variety of readers. I decided to go for a fiction and a non-fiction. I picked Magpie Murders for the fiction just because I thought it was one of the most accessible and charming and captivating fiction books that I read this year. It's a mystery story, so a lot of mystery lovers would like this, but I think people who like historical fiction and like charming small town kind of stories would like this as well. I think people who like books that are character driven would like this and I would also say that if you like plot and kind of reveals I think this book has that as well so that's why I thought a lot of people would find things that they would like in this book. For nonfiction, I pick Educated by Tara Westover which has been a nonfiction darling of 2018 and I think it's because so many different people can take different things away from this story. It's a story where you kind of see this fish out of water but it's also a story where you see a woman rising up and taking control of her own future. I 
I think that there's inspirational parts to the story. I think there's coming of age parts to the story. Um, there's history parts to the story. Lots of different people would find little nuggets of interest and wisdom. And specialized appeal number eight, a book you liked but would be hesitant to recommend to just anyone. I picked two things. I picked I Will Find You by Joanna Connors. It was a nonfiction book of a reporter trying to track down the man who raped her. I just think the subject matter in this book it just would not appeal to everyone. You don't really get an answer or really any resolve because it's such a devastating thing to have happen to a person. So I would only recommend it to people who like stories where they are reading about an injustice and then they see how a person is being transformed by this injustice or how they view their life now as a result. And I also wanted to talk about Dark Room, which is a graphic memoir, I would say. It's like a graphic history book. Our author, Lila Quintero Weaver, who is moving from Argentina to segregationist Alabama. It's 1960s civil rights history. This also had a really limited publication and it was published, I think, by a university press. So as you can tell from there, it does not have a mass appeal. It is a very specialized little book. Number nine, reflect on your year as a bookish content creator. Goals met, good and bad memories, favorite videos you've made. I remember last year I made a whole video where I discussed being on booktube for two years and what that has been like, what I've learned, etc. This past year I didn't make like a three-year video. I didn't feel the need to do so. And so this will be kind of like my segue of like how it's going, what I'm thinking. I put up a video recently where I discussed all of my uh, end of year goals for my booktube channel and my reading. So I read my 52 books, etc. I was just in general less stringent and more flexible with my reading and I like that. Some videos that I really enjoyed making were my goals and stats videos for last year and like how I did. I'm excited to make another one of those next year and I also made lots of nonfiction November videos and I love making those as well and that's usually my favorite part of the whole year so I would say any of my nonfiction November videos were my favorite that I made this year. Just in general if you're kind of stagnated Mm, it's okay to, to be in that position. I sometimes feel like I don't know where I'm going with this channel or what people want or what I want to make and sometimes I kind of just feel like I cycle through the same three videos and currently reading videos, TBR videos, wrap-up videos, done. I don't really know sometimes what people actually enjoy or take away from my channel. I took lots of breaks this year. I just, I didn't have a consistent posting schedule. I went months without posting a couple times. I personally feel okay with that. I guess I'm just like confused as to how that is perceived or like what's the point of my channel. So I thought that I would create an improvement survey and I took this idea from Sylvia. I've also seen Karen from the audiobook aficionado make kind of similar surveys to gain some feedback from people who watch and I would love for you to fill out the survey um, and they're about like my video quality what you see they're also about like what I read and what kinds of videos that I post and I would love if you would take the time to fill out as much of it as you can I would love to gain any of those insights from you the last question for this video is to tag some fellow bookish content creators so I'm gonna link some of them down below thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.